One of the mornings while I was there, the rabbi, the holy rabbi, how many of you knew the, the Holy Spirit is your rabbi, he's your teacher? He began to teach me some things about 1111. How many of you know where you're sitting right now? You're sitting at 1111 North Buchanan. And when Joan Hunter was here a few weeks ago, she taught Pastor Joe something. I'm going to share it with you during the message about 1111. But 1111 is a very significant number. So don't go away. We're expecting more people to get here. Amen. Hopefully they'll show up. Praise God. I hate for somebody to have to tell Pastor Joe we had such a low crowd this Sunday before you got home because that's discouraging to a pastor. But we're glad you're here. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's pray for our Africa team. They're going, I don't know exactly what the itinerary is, but they're going to start their track back to Houston. While they're in Houston, Pastor Joe and Jackie are going to the Elijah List Conference. They've been invited there by Joan Hunter, and she's going to introduce them to some publishers that have published for her, and she's believing for Joe to be able to write a book and get it published. And there, she's actually going to, I believe the story is, she's going to send people that are, that are like ghost writers. How many of you know all these people that have books, they didn't write them? I have a good friend that's a ghostwriter in Tampa, Florida, and she wrote the book Jesus Freaks. But her name's not on it. You don't see her name anywhere because uh, the, what, what was the name of that group Michael Tate was in? No, that was, this was before the Newsboys. DC Talk. Yeah, they have their name on there, but she wrote the book. So that's kind of the way this is working. There's things inside people but then they need somebody to help them write it. Amen? So that's what's going on with Pastor Joe and Jackie. Let's pray for them. I want you all to join me in praying for them as they travel. Travel is not real easy, especially it's, it's hard going from this side to that side, transcontinental, but it's actually harder coming back because you lose, almost, you lose those five hours. And so somewhere you've, you've lost that time and it takes a little while for your body to catch up. But the Holy Spirit can supernaturally help you catch up. Amen. Lord, we're so grateful. We're excited to hear the reports next Sunday about all that's going on, went on in Africa, Lord. Pastor Joe, all he told me is it was a very powerful trip. And so, Lord, we're excited to hear about it. And as they make their track home, Lord, we ask you for your protection. We ask you, Lord, that the angels of God be with this Africa team as they make their way back home. Father, we thank you. We thank you that every conveyance they get on, they will find safety because your angels go before them to prepare the way. Hallelujah. Father, we pray that you give them supernatural strength, supernatural rest as they travel back to this time zone, Lord. I know from experience that it's harder coming back, but Lord, we just thank you that you give them supernatural recovery in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we pray for this Elijah List conference. We pray, God, for divine connections. Connections has already been ordained and written down in Joe and Jackie's book. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that your favor is on their life and your favor goes before them and your favor surrounds them like a shield. And when these people from the publishing company meet them, they'll be excited on the inside to meet them. Glory to God. We just give you praise and glory and honor for that, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Father, we thank you that Pastor Joe and Jackie will arrive back in Amarillo safely next Sunday. And we'll set our hearts to receive from them. Hallelujah. And we're excited about it, Lord. Father, I thank you for this day. 
I don't know if I've ever been more excited about preaching a message than this one called 1111. And Lord, I'm asking you to think through my mind. Think through Linda's mind. Speak through our lips, Lord, that we speak as an oracle of God because you spoke to my heart that you are launching a whole new ministry in us through this sermon today. And so, Father, we lay hold of that. And we are the most Father, I pray that, that this sermon that you have taught me will be an encouragement. I pray that there be revelation knowledge that goes forth today. And Father, I'm believing you for a great presence of your Spirit, a presence of Almighty God as we enter into your courts today with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, and all of our strength, Lord. We worship you, and we sing the hallelujah to you today, Lord. Hallelujah, for you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Why don't you stand up on your feet and join me in saying you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to receive glory and honor and power and blessing and riches. And we give that to you today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Father God, you're welcome in this place today. Lord Jesus, you are welcome in our life today. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here today. And I thank you, Lord, that when we leave here today, we will be stronger. We will be stronger. We will be stronger than when we came today. And we give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. Love endures forever, for he is good, he is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, his love endures forever. For the life that's been
what's not to love about you? Heaven and earth adore you. Kings and kingdoms bow down. Son of God, you are the Every praise. 
worship in one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship in one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah unto our God. Glory hallelujah unto our God. you in this house this morning, Lord, to be exalted upon our praise, to be exalted upon our praise. Hallelujah. To lift up our high praises, to join in with all creation, to decree and declare of your greatness and your holiness and your worth, oh Lord. To sing, to praise, to honor, to glorify our King. Heaven 
the shaking that hearts awaken our God is moving forever changing us there is a trembling there is revival the sound of worship so great and glorious Holy Spirit hear us shaking that hearts awaken our God is moving forever changing us there is a trembling there is revival the sound of worship so great and glorious Holy Spirit hear us now Like a rush 
rushing wind, send your spirit here. Breath of heaven, breathe on us. Breath of heaven, breathe on us. Lift up your hands and shout. The Lord is with us now. Lift up your voice and sing. He is holy. Lift up your hands and shout. The Lord is with us now. Lift up your voice and sing. He is holy. Lift up your hands and shout. The Lord is with us now. Lift up your voice and sing. He is holy. Lift up your hands and shout. The Lord is with us now. Lift up your voice and sing. He is holy.
your voice Holy, 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 thank you, holy, 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 to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords. He's worthy. He is worthy. He's so worthy to be praised. Oh, house today, Lord, and we worship you with all of our heart. We worship you with all of our mind. We worship you with all of our strength. We worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. We worship you, Lord. You're the great God. You're the mighty God. Hallelujah. You are awesome, God. Awesome in our life. Oh, glory be to God. I hear the Lord saying, the wind of my spirit is blowing. And it is blowing against discouragement. It's blowing against all fears. It's blowing against anything that's against you. 
Have I not said that the greater is he that's within you than he that's in the world? So let the wind of my spirit blow upon your heart. For I am God Almighty and I am in control. So fear not. Be not discouraged. For my wind of my spirit is blowing in the earth in this hour. And it is blowing away your discouragement, your fears, your anxieties. For I am God and I do all things well. Take heart, take heart, for I'm pulling back curtains. And the hidden things of your God are behind them, an expanse of my love and my power beyond anything you can imagine. There is greatness behind these hidden places, these places that are secret in my heart. But I, I so desire to share the secrets of my heart for you. Your future is bright with power and majesty if you choose to look. Your wall will brighten if you choose to look. All will be done if you choose to be still. In your God's presence, the place where I can touch you as no other can, the place where I show my greatest love of all, where the expanse of the hidden things behind these curtains are greater than any you've ever seen or ever will. It is the place where the world comes alive to the truth of the Son of God, high and lifted up, that the blood that was shed was more than enough and always will be. Dare to look. Dare to do what the enemy doesn't want you to do. For you have the power that I gave you through my Son if you choose to use it. For son, certainly there's a newness of your God that has come to your heart and your life. An expanse in you that's growing day by day. For as you spend the time in the hidden places, the secret places, I will tell you things you never even dreamed of. For the dreams you've dreamed of me for me are small in comparison to what I want to give you. For there is a new day and a new time for you. You are not the small little boy anymore, but you are a man of God. You are fully armed. You have a stature in the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, hold your sword high. Never apologize for the way I made you, for you are the man I called to be who you are. And the Christ in you is more than enough. You will come to know this in such truth and such confidence. You will see things differently. And you will know who I am. But it's in the heart where I'll speak to you the most tender of things that will do the greatest. For I say, do you not believe that in my power I can do all things? But it is in my wisdom that I choose to use people. So the things that are going to be open today have an ear to hear and let it hit your heart. But don't forget to write it down for the enemy likes to steal. The enemy likes to take the things that I have given. For I have chosen ones that there's people in the, in the audience that carry keys and have yet to step forward to open their treasure. But he, he says today there is a prophetic word and a prophetic word to be given out. But the prophetic word also goes with an action. So don't just hear with your mind, but allow your heart to be involved. And then when you leave this house, allow your feet to start and take the word that is given. For my people don't realize how blessed you are. For this is a house of prayer, backed by prayer, backed by prophecy, backed by my spirit. For if the spirit 
and Jesus himself was to say the word, would you look at it differently? Did I not choose in my wisdom, not in my power, to use the people in the house? So when you hear, take it and hold tight, partake of it, eat it, and allow the Holy Spirit to do the rest. Hallelujah. Can you do it? It's the power of his presence. It's the power of his presence that changes us. Your glory all around us. And we're undone. And we're undone. You've Thank you. Oh, I love that. The power of His presence. Hallelujah. It's actually 11-11. The power of His presence. It's 11-11. Hallelujah. Well, I'm not going to get too much into that right now. We're so glad you're here today. Praise the Lord. I'd like for you to say this with me. You know, we're not leaving worship because we changed the order of the service. Sometimes you can hear the heart of God right in our mission statement. Would you put our mission statement up, Mike? We're a community of brethren. Say this with me. We're a community of brethren gathered together by the Holy Spirit to partake of one another's strengths that together we may pursue common purpose. That purpose is to go into all the world and make disciples by preaching and training, thereby reaching out to families in need and unto them demonstrating the likeness of Christ. To this end, we are united. We hear the same things. We speak the same things. We do the will of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And what I always like to add to it, Jesus reigns over Cornerstone Ministries. Say that with me. Jesus reigns over Cornerstone Ministries. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Well, we're going to uh, receive an offering, which is also worship. And uh, we're also going to partake of communion. I just finished a four-part series on the legal system of Jehovah. We have those CDs available. If you would like to have that set of CDs, there's an order blank at the front desk, the counter. Just put your name and what, what it is that you want, and we'll get those for you as soon as we can. It's already several orders i got to get ready this week, so if you want those, get them. And you can just leave it on the Connect Center or there's a tray on the front desk and we'll look for them on Tuesday when we get here and get them ready for you. But uh, during this uh, series, I taught about communion in the courts of heaven. And I think that was probably one of the most significant messages. I actually took two services to talk about it. Because part three was also about the court, about this communion table. And the Apostle Paul, when he is uh, talking about the court, I mean about communion, he says, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you promulgate the Lord's death until He comes. That word promulgate is a legal term that means to take laws and decrees from the court and execute them or set them in motion. You do that by an official proclamation. And every statement of the New Testament is a verdict from the court of heaven. And so you can take confessions from the, the Word of God and speak them out. 
Do it while you're at the communion table because that's what this is all about. The greatest verdict in all of human history was at the cross of Jesus where he shed his blood and his body was broken. And the verdict is, I am healed. The verdict is, I am forgiven. The verdict is, I am free. Hallelujah. But he goes on to say to examine yourself. The word examine is a legal term again. It says, therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup in an unworthy manner will be guilty. Guilty. What, what do they find you in the court of law? Guilty or not guilty? So if you're in, coming in an unworthy manner because you have cases against you, if you've done something wrong, we taught you that in the court of heaven, first thing you deal with is sin and transgression, rebellion and iniquity. Even iniquity in your bloodline. So when you come to the court, when you come to this table, you think about that. That's what he's saying. You think about the judge. And you examine yourself. And is there something I need to repent of as I'm taking this, this bread and taking this cup? Amen? So let a man examine himself. That word examine, how many of you have ever heard of cross-examination in a courtroom? That's kind of what this word means. You're examining yourself. You're questioning yourself. You're looking to see if there's something that you need to get right with God today. And let him eat the bread and drink of the cup. It doesn't take long. Kenneth Hagin, he, ha he had something in him one time. And the Lord revealed it to him while he was driving down the road. He said, you got a bad attitude. He said it took him two seconds to repent. And he never had that attitude ever again. It doesn't take long to get things right with God. Because the price has already been paid. That's what this table is here to remind you of. The price has already been paid. Hallelujah. For he who eats this bread in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many die. Don't let that happen. Don't leave this place. Every month we partake of communion and it's a time for you to get everything right with God. Did I do something wrong this week? Did I do something wrong this month that I need to ask God to forgive me of? That's all he's saying. Judge yourself and then take it to the judge and say, Lord, you saw what I did. I'm asking you to forgive me. It's how easy it is. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned. We may not be condemned. One of the things I said over and over and over during this series on the courts of heaven, all I ever wanted was my freedom. That's what this is all about today. As we partake of this, it just reminds me that Jesus set me free. By His sacrifice at Calvary, He set me free. Hallelujah. We're not condemned, but we're free. Amen. Glory to God. And then we're going to receive an offering today. Praise the Lord. We take uh, cash right here in this treasure chest. We take checks if you have a check. We have uh, credit cards if you want to give by credit card. The beautiful lady at the back of the room, Sharana will uh, receive your credit card offering. And we can, you can give online. Go to www.mycornerstoneministries.org and you can give online if that's the way you would like to. We're, I'm going to talk about that after. Hallelujah. All right. Kind of gets solemn when you think about coming before the judge, but that's all right. Everybody have your offering ready? Everybody stand up. Praise the Lord. You come and bring your offering. As we do this, we're going to remember the love of blood. As you take this cup, remember, Paul, this ain't just blood of another goat. This blood is precious blood. So many here, so many lambs were offered up. But all the blood that was spilled could never feel this bitter cup. Till one spotless limb in the form of a man gave his life 
for you and me. It was the only blood that could ever set me free. Cause his blood was not just blood of another spotless lamb. His blood, his precious blood, for it washed the sins of man. And his blood, it heals my body, it sets my spirit free. I'm so glad his precious blood still flows from Calvary. blood could heal my broken body and no other blood could save my sin sick soul there's no other blood that could conquer death and win the victory no other blood than the blood he shed for me Cause his blood was not just blood of another spotless lamb. His blood, his precious blood, for it washed the sins of all men. And his blood, it heals my body and it sets my spirit free. I'm so glad his precious blood so flows from Calvary. But his blood was not just blood of another spotless lamb. For his blood, his precious blood, for it washed the sins of all men. And his blood, it heals my body and sets my spirit free. I'm so glad Calvary. No other blood could heal my broken body, and no other blood could save my sin sick soul. There's no other blood that could conquer death and win the victory. No other blood but the blood he shed for me. But his blood was not just blood of another spotless lamb. For his blood, his precious blood, for it washed the sins of man. And his blood, it heals my body and sets my spirit free. It heals my body and sets my spirit free. I'm so glad his precious blood still flows from Calvary. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad for the blood. Hallelujah. Jesus, we rejoice in you today. We're so thankful for that you were willing to come from heaven to earth. Your body was broken in Pilate's judgment hall. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that you took our infirmities, our diseases, our illnesses, and you carried away our weaknesses. And so as we partake of this bread today, Lord, we remember that. And I command all sickness and disease. I command all pain and suffering to go from our bodies in the name of Jesus. From the top of our head to the sole of our feet, I declare what happened in Pilate's judgment hall to be so for us. We are healed by the stripes of Jesus. And as we partake of this bread, Lord Jesus, we do the same as you did. 
we thank you for it. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for your body. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now receive the bread, and as you do, receive healing into your body. Lord, we thank you for this cup. This cup is the blood of the New Testament. Hallelujah. It was shed. It wasn't spilled. It was shed. And it was caught by the Holy Spirit, our lawyer. And after three days, you took your own blood and you presented it before the mercy seat of God on the altar of God so that we could be forgiven. And Lord, today we thank you that we are forgiven and we are free. We are free from the law of sin and death today. We are free from sin today because of your precious blood. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, you can be seated. Thank you, Mike. This would be a good time for you to do oh, what we ask. Well, let's pray over this offering first. Hallelujah. Thank God for ushers. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for this offering. Hallelujah. We're cheerful. We're joyous. We're prompt to do it, givers. Our heart is in our giving, Lord. And as we give today, we just say and proclaim that what we give will be given back to us in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, for this is our year of abundant harvest. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that you're able to make all grace Every favor and earthly blessing come to us in abundance and we are furnished, Lord, so we have plenty for every good work that you tell us to give to. We receive it, Lord. I bless the giver now in Jesus' name and I bind this money to the body of Christ that it serve the evil one no longer in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Sometimes you feel like you're in a little bit of a rush. Nobody's rushing me. But I forgot to tell you, we still need 34 goats. You don't know what that's all about? Pastor Joe is taking some people to Nepal. Nepal came to us through our Facebook because of what Deborah and Marcy are doing back there. No, no, not that, not that one. Thank you, though, George. George, it's so good to see you today. Everybody give George a big hand. So we are purchasing 94 goats, which is uh, 47 pairs, and it's going to feed a village or something. These people have to move where the food is, and by us giving them goats, they're going to get to stay in one place because they're going to be able to drink goat's milk. Amen. I hear it's good. I don't know if I've ever drank goat's milk. Set them back just a little bit further, Mike. Give us a little bit of preaching room up there. Thank you. Put them right back in here for the camera. There we go. We're getting set up for a tag team preaching. So if you'd like to give a goat to the people of Nepal, they cost $30. And uh, Jeanette, do you know when you're leaving? Ten. So we have about a month. So if you'd like to give $30 sometime between now and November 10th, that'll we're believing God for 34 more goats. Amen. $30. One goat, $30. So if two of you want to go together and buy, you buy half a goat each, go by all means, do it. Amen. Sometimes you think, well, I can't give $30. Just give something and put on the put it put on your offering. We've already taken an offering. But we have a month to buy the rest of these 34 goats. Amen. And I think that's pretty cool. You get to eat meat, right? Because after the goats start producing, then they're going to get to eat goat meat. And I hear it's pretty good too. Well, I am going to ask you, uh, that's my usher's gone. George, come and help me. Come on. Back up here. We have a little situation. Offering is right here, George. I 
someone from off the street to write to us. We have a situation. Jonathan, will you come and stand up here for just a minute? Jonathan has been here for, you know, right here in front of me, like we do the office. Thank you. Mike was gone. So Jonathan's been here. How long you been here now? Stand up here by me. Huh? Two months? You already been here? Wow. So um, something happened with his airline ticket. And uh, it, it wound up costing him a lot more in order to go home. And he's got to come up with this money to get back home. And so I'm asking you today to just look deep into your heart and see if you have some extra money that you could give to help Jonathan get home. Now, when he told me this, he told me in a text the other day, my first prayer was, Lord, please don't let him get this money. We'd like to keep him here. And you know what the Lord said? You better repent right now and pray that he gets the money and even take an offering for him so he can get it. So. We're just going to do another offering, and all of this offering is going to go to help Jonathan with this ticket. He's worked hard since he's been here. He's led worship. He's preached, and uh, he's been a student, and so he's worthy of his hire. But we, he, he, I mean, he didn't ask for anything. He didn't ask me to do this, and I brought him up here because I want you to see we're going to miss him. Even like Friday, we didn't have anybody to do praise and worship on Friday. And Jonathan came over and said, do you have the list yet? I said, yeah, we have zero on the list. Can you do it? And he led praise and worship. And so I, at first I thought, I'm going to have to do it. And then I thought, no, Jonathan's still here. He hasn't gone home yet. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the divine delay. So I have somebody to sing in the service today besides me. Amen. Because we didn't want them to go digging out the rotten tomatoes back there. Bill always gets the goat bin out whenever I sing and brings it out here, gives the people to throw it. How many of y'all know we have a goat bin back there? We've been sowing in the goats. I just came to me. We've been sowing in the goats for a long time. We're going to have all 94 goats. Because we've been sowing into the goats from corner. How many of you know the, even the goats eat out of Cornerstone Outreach? Amen. So we're going to have 94 goats to give those people in Nepal. All right. Everybody got a special offering ready to give to Jonathan? If you can't do it today, but you'd like to sometime this week, you can call us on Tuesday and tell, say, ask for Sharon and say, Sharon, I'm going to give so, much, so and so to Jonathan. I just couldn't do it on Sunday. So don't think that because missing this, you missed out because he's leaving on Thursday. He's got to leave on Thursday, get back to Uganda because next Sunday is youth night and he's the youth pastor. So he's got to be there. Well, let's get him there, all right? We sure love y'all for doing this for him. All right, come on. And uh, we don't have any music. This is just uh, telling Jonathan, we love you. We appreciate what you've done while you were here. Hallelujah. See how these people love you? I've enjoyed spending some extra time with Jonathan. We went to Overcomer together. We did some other stuff together, like learn how to do laundry. Glory to God. Wow, look at that. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Jonathan, come right down here. I know the camera people don't like us to move, but we're going to just leave that right there for just a minute. Here comes another offering. Just stand right over here by this offering, Jonathan. Linda, come and join me. Emily, come and join me. I was fixing to say moon pie, but I probably shouldn't say moon pie in church. Mike, would you come down here and join us? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to pray over Jonathan. And we bless Him in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank You that every need is met because You meet our needs according to Your riches and the glory. And I speak the glory of God over Jonathan's life, over his finances. 
Lord, we're so thankful for the time we've had together with Jonathan. But we send him back home with our blessing, Lord. And we will rejoice in days of his victory when we hear reports of his victories, Lord. And the things that he's doing for the kingdom of God. Father, we thank you that many lives will come into the kingdom of God through this young man. We thank you, Lord, that his supernatural healing will come through his medical outreaches. Not just physical medicine, but the medicine of your word, Lord. Grab his hand, Mike. Grab his other hand there. I thank you, Lord. There's a special anointing in these hands to deliver the healing that was purchased for us by the stripes of the Lord Jesus. Every body that Jonathan touches, Lord, will experience a healing anointing from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. Woo, glory to God. Father, we ask you for, ever, for your protection. As he travels, Lord, every conveyance that he is on, I thank you that the angels of God have already gone before him. And I thank you, Lord, for supernatural safety in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. heard one thing and there was this large group of people and they were it was about you and just this one simple thing they said sin for the mighty man of God and they were talking about you amen mighty man of God what a privilege we've had to have you in our midst for two months now glory to God well are you ready for 11 11 can you put that one slide up that just has the numbers 1111? You are sitting at 1111 North Buchanan. Hallelujah. Before we actually get to 1111, that's the main point of what we're going to be preaching today. But several months ago, the Lord began to speak to my heart. And He told me, I am going to... Use you and Linda to strengthen marriages. To strengthen marriages. So even as we start today, I want everybody that's married to stand up on your feet. Join me right up here. Whether your spouse is here with us, don't, this isn't a time to clap. I'm about to release Rak Hasak Amas. And just stand right where you are. We're not bringing everybody forward yet. Just stand up on your feet. Now, if you're single and you're thinking, this service is not for me, ushers don't let them out because 11, 11 is for everyone. So hang around, but right now I'm talking to those who are married. If you're by your spouse, grab her hand. If not, just lift your hands to the Lord. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for marriages today in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you will strengthen marriages today. I pray, God, for a divine anointing to come into marriages to remove burdens and destroy yokes. Every yoke and every marriage, I command you to dissolve right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, only you know what is happening right now in marriages. And we give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it in the name of Jesus. I release the strength of God and I declare over marriages right now, rock, hasak, amas, only be strong and very courageous. Father, we ask you for your anointing flow to, to flow through us as we minister this beginning message on M squared. Hallelujah. I believe you, Lord, to just bring revelation knowledge to everyone that's sitting here today in Jesus' name. Glory to God. You can be seated. Hallelujah. So as... I was thinking about this. I'm on a, a Facebook page called Trey and Lee's Stronger Marriages, and I thought I'd like for mine to be called Stronger Marriages. 
And I know Johnny and Lori Thomason have known them for a number of years, even went to one of their class, and theirs is called a glorious marriage. And uh, I have a glorious marriage. I do. I have a glorious marriage. No, no, it's because every day with Linda is sweeter than the day before. And today, we have been married 10,760 days. I say, what you want, baby? Hmm. Glory to God. He's sweet, y'all. He is sweet. And so as I was thinking about this, I had a conversation with Jonathan. I said, give me an idea. And I looked up some synonyms about glorious, because I want everybody to have a glorious marriage. And uh, I came up with a word. And he said, well, call it M squared. And it stuck. I texted it to Linda. She said, I like that. So we're launching today M squared. And it means a matchless marriage. Are you interested in a matchless marriage? Huh? Anybody interested in a matchless marriage? If you're, if you're single, stay with me. Because 11-11 is our main point today. But before we get to the main point, <clears throat> there are three things that you have to do if you're going to have M squared. If you're going to have a matchless marriage, first thing you have to do is pursue each other. Whatever it took to get them in the first place, don't ever stop doing. Amen. Whenever I was pursuing Linda the first time over 10,760 days ago, I had to take her out to eat. And can I tell you, I'm going to take her out to eat again today as soon as this service is over. Amen. We're going on a date as soon as this service is over. We don't just count it as lunch after church. We, have, we go on a date, and we spend that time visiting with each other. We pursue each other. I text her from time to time and just say, I can't even, I wish I could come and sit in your office today instead of mine because I miss you, something like that. And then you have to support your spouse. Wives, support your husband. Women, support your, I already said it, I just used two different words. Husbands, support your wife. And there's nobody in this room that's more excited to hear Linda preach today than me. And she's already preached this to me at the kitchen table a couple of times. And I can't wait what's coming out of her mouth today. She's the best preacher I've ever heard in my life. And then the third, the third thing you have to do is 11-11. If you'll stick around just a little while, we'll tell you what that is, all right? Anybody excited about 11-11? The Holy Spirit started downloading this to me, and I thought, wow, this is so good. So I'm going to just start this. I'm going to open it up to all the husbands. We've got several husbands sitting here. I want you to listen to me, men. I'm going to tell you what your wife needs. Some of you are like, she, asked, she thinks she needs a diamond ring, and she thinks she... <laughs> your wife needs to be your special sweetheart. Amen. I only have eyes for one, and she's the most beautiful woman in all the world. I don't need to look at anything else. My son told me one time when I guess he saw some kind of affair on TV, he said, if you ever have an affair, I'm going to beat you up. I said, you don't have to worry about that. Whenever you got a Cadillac in the garage, you don't go after no Volkswagen. You will never ever see me leaving her. And I've even told her, if you ever leave me, I'm going with you. And if it's for another man, I'm going to beat him up and kick him out. And if it's for another woman, I'm going to deliver you first. Your wife, husbands, are you listening to me? Your wife needs 25 hugs every day. She needs 25 hugs. I think I've given you two. This is number three, four, <laughs> number five, six. Okay, let's, let's save the rest of it for later. All right. Number three. I, the wives have more points, so when Linda gets up here, she don't have as much to tell the men as I do. But your husbands, your wife needs consolation. 
consolation. We live in a day, we live in a time, and we live in an hour when the world is really rough to be in. And whenever your wife is in the workaday world, when she gets home, she doesn't need you to start nagging at her. She needs you to console her and tell her, Honey, I appreciate you working today. And to show my appreciation for you, I'm going to wash the dishes. I, everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. Husbands, your wife needs gentleness. In everything you do or talk about, you need to be gentle with your wife. Be gentle. We're rough. Men are rough. We can't wait for the Cowboys to tackle Aaron Rodgers this afternoon. Because we like, we like that rough and tough. But when you're dealing with your wife, it ain't a football game. You don't tackle her. You treat her with gentleness. Gentleness is one of the fruits of the Spirit. You've got to grow that, men, if you want to have a M squared marriage. Be gentle with her. And then I made a, type, a typo on my notes here. And my wife said, what does a string man mean? <laughs> what is a string? What is a string man? Your wife needs you to be strong. You're gentle when talking to her, but you're strong because you're, you're her protector. You're her protector. You protect your wife. Amen. Your wife needs romance. She needs romance. Buy her some. If she likes flowers, here's the thing you got to do is learn her love language. I'm not going to teach love languages today. You go find out for yourself. And then you figure out what this person's love language is. Linda's love language is acts of service. And you know what's so neat that God put us together because my motivational gift is serving. There's nothing that motivates me more in all of my life than to serve this woman right here. Because somebody even mentioned... Well, no wonder you have a matchless marriage. You cook for her. I serve her. I serve her. I told somebody, I said, if my wife ever decided to leave me and I didn't go with her, she'd starve to death next week because everything that she eats, I cooked it and put it on the table for her. I'm her servant. Amen. Now, one of her jobs at home is doing the laundry because if I'm going to go to the stove, and buy the groceries, and now I do it on my telephone in the easy chair because of all this new technology. Save myself some time. Then she's going to do the laundry and vacuum the floor. But you know what I do on my days off, or used to before I got my grandson on my day off? I used to do laundry. I used to do her job because my heart is to serve her. My heart is to serve you. As a matter of fact, I wanted to tell you this. Kids, I know you're missing me back in children's church. What I'm going to preach to you today is just as important as anything you can learn back there, but somebody, a friend of mine that lives way over on the East Coast, gave me a computer, and he loaded it up with all kinds of games and music videos. I can't wait back to get back there and play with the kids. We're going to play the match game next week. We're going to play tic-tac-toe next week. We're going to play Wheel of Fortune next week. All right, we're going to have fun in children's church next week because I had to preach to your parents today. And then your wife needs affection. Affection. Amen. That kind of goes along with hugs, but she needs affection. But I already kind of mentioned it. Affection doesn't start in the bedroom. Affection starts in the kitchen. If you can't help your wife with the chores around the house, then she's not much in the mood. Okay, they're moving right along. She's going to deal with that other. Husbands, your wife needs you to say, I love you. I love you. It's kind of like, the, kind of like the old farmer. Well, I told you I loved you when I married you 10,000 days ago. And if I ever change my mind, I'll let you know. No, you got to tell her every day you love her. Call her, text her. Figure out her love language. Let her know, I love you. I love you, Linda. Now tell these women what I need. Okay, women, you ready to listen up? All right. My husband is a noted preacher. I'm so glad. 
because I'm, I'm kind of fly by the seat of your pants. But um, what your husband needs, number one, you're, you need to be 100% behind him. You need to be his cheerleader. You know, in this world that we live in today, the world is so demeaning to men. You know, you, you can just turn on the TV two minutes, like on Nickelodeon or uh, some of these sitcom shows that they have, and, and they demean the man and his position and his authority. They belittle him, and there's such disrespect in this world. And as a Christian, spirit-filled woman of God, we need to be his cheerleader. We need to cheer him up. We need to encourage him and be in his corner. That's real important to be in your husband's corner, even when you don't feel like it. And I can tell you there's been times in almost 30 years of marriage, I certainly haven't felt like it. But when I go ahead and, and yield, maybe he's done something to me or said something to me that mm, just kind of made me bristle. You've been there, huh? Well, I just choose. I make a conscious decision. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be his cheerleader. I'm in his corner. If anybody's going to be for Tim Elliott, it's going to be me. It's not going to be another woman out here giving my husband attention that she's not supposed to be giving my husband. It's going to be me. I'm determined. It's going to be me. Number two, we lift our husbands up. That kind of goes along with that when he needs recharging. You know, there's been times through the years when we've pastored churches and and you feel like Tim's been up there preaching his heart out, and you feel like nobody was receiving it. You know, it was just kind of like bouncing off the wall back there. Well, with the call that my husband has on his life, there's been many times I've had to say, honey, that was a good message. You preached it. You, you believe it. You preached it. You live it. It was a good message. You did good. And I like to say you did your father proud. Amen. So recharge him. Amen. Number three, reaffirm, which means assert again strongly. Encourage him. Reaffirm and encourage him. Now, number four, okay. Before you go yes. any further on the reaffirm, yeah. like for me, a lot of times you have helped me. Like you pointed something out that I could Kind of talk about that for just a minute. Okay. So in reaffirming, there have been times where Tim, maybe in the pulpit, has said something like, I'm like going, sitting down there going, ooh, <laughs> can you say that just a little bit differently? Um, but, you know, that's when, as a husband and wife, because I love my husband and I care for him greatly, you know, I don't want, I want people to receive him. I want you to, I want, I want the engrafted word of God to be received from this platform to you. And there's sometimes there's better ways maybe to say things. Well, see, that's when I can reaffirm him and say, honey, that was good, but there, maybe we can tweak that just a little bit more and maybe say it this way. It will be more palatable, you know? And so I, I kind of I do that from time to time. I'm not his critique, but I am his helpmate. You know, I'm not criticizing him. I'm not, he's not coming home, and I'm like, well, you should have said that, you know, just ugly. I'm not ugly, but I just say it in a way where it's palatable. Say, you know, just that one phrase that you made there, that one statement you made, maybe say it this way. So that's part of reaffirming your mate. Amen. And it's different for, you know, different areas, Your you know, whatever your husband does, or, um, you know, it's different for you than it is maybe for me. but. I just want to encourage you to do that. It's important. Okay? okay. Number four, don't everybody uh, fall out of your seat or anything, <laughs> is sexual intimacy. Sexual intimacy. You know, that's important to a man. It's important to a woman too, but most cases I've seen in the church, it's really important to all the men. <laughs> and it's important to us too, us women too. You know, a good question to ask yourself is, how is your love life? You know, there's, there's a lot to intimacy. We kind of do this test. We started doing this test recently, didn't we, babe? Where it's called, take a picture of your 
of your relationship. And it's called PIC. P-I-C. It stands for picture. It just for short. It's an acronym. And it's a little test that we do from time to time between the two of us. P stands for passion. And P is how desirous, like we'll just, we'll, we'll be talking this and, and you know, how desirous today are you or am I? Okay, we're dismissed. Let's go home. <laughs> well, no. You know, and this is, I mean, this is part of life. And God, I want to say the world has perverted sex in the marriage. It's way perverted. It's way perverted. You've got so much stuff that's just in the world, and it's so perverted. We need to go to the book and see what the passion is all about. But we ask ourselves these questions. P is for passion. And, we, you know, we'll look at each other and say, well, how passionate are you today about making love? You know, from a scale to one, one to ten. And he'll say, well, um, so I'm about three, <laughs> something. <laughs> you know, and I'll tell him, this is not a bad thing. The church needs to talk about it because the world sure is talking about it. And there's a lot of lures out there, a lot of lures. You know, you don't need pornography to make an exciting marriage. You don't need that. God show, can show you what you need in your marriage, and he needs to be the center of it. But we ask ourselves from time to time, you know, what's from 1 to 10, honey, what is your, what is your passion today? And he'll tell me. And then we'll move to intimacy. Most of the time, people think intimacy is sex, and it's not. Intimacy is talking and communicating with each other, you know, bearing your heart to one another. It's the emotion yes. connection. There you go, the emotional connection. And then C is for commitment. We'll ask ourselves, or ask him, or he'll ask me, you know, how committed are you to our relationship? 100%. Yes. I already told him, you leave, I'm going with you. Yeah. <laughs> and I am, I can truthfully say, I'm 100%, you know, with my husband. I'm committed to him. I'm not looking for another. You know, there's opportunities, but you know what? We have to put that down. We have to shun that thing. We have to run from that thing because I'm committed. I, I did just didn't commit to Tim Elliott for a couple of years. I committed to him for life. It's lifetime. You know, that's one thing my mom and dad taught me growing up. The two most important things that you'll ever do is receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior and who you marry. You know, because who you marry, it can make you or it can break you. It's very, very, very important for those single folks out here. You know, we're not going to linger on this too much longer, but it's important who you marry. Don't marry just because you're lonely. Don't marry somebody just because you're lonely or you want companionship. Know that you know. You get in his presence. You commune with him. He'll give you the plan. He'll show you where to be at the right time with the right people and the right person. Amen. He will do that. He's faithful. He did to me. That's one of the things when I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, going to Bible school. I was single. And you know, you think, I think I've said this before, you think, man, this is the prime place to find a mate. You know, I was single, and I had, I had a desire. I started praying about it when I was 16 years old. And I think, man, I, you know, I would have thought it would have been in Bible school. You know, I was working for Willie George during that time. And um, the Spirit of God, I graduated from Raymond in 1987. And the Spirit of God said, Linda, because I was talking to him about it, I said, okay, what, 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 what Holy Spirit? And he said, because my plan was to move back home and, and help my home church, get a good car, you know, the basic plan. And the Spirit of God said, stay put, your mate is coming. Just like that on the inside, just like I know my name. The Holy Spirit said, stay put, your mate is coming. I said, okay. So I continued to work for, you know, Willie George Ministries. And then um, directly about a year, I think a year from that, Tim came on staff. So when God puts it together, it's going to be the best. It'll be the best. And you can expect that. You know, Tim and mine and Tim's marriage has just gotten only better and better and better as the years go by. Amen. And that's what it should be. When you base it 
on the Lord, when you're spending time with Him, you're communing with Him, marriage should just get better and better and better. We're not ourselves. The two shall become one flesh. There's a lot to that. There's more teaching on this to do, but we're going to... And then number five, we'll move on to number five. Your husband wants you to look your best. Well, I've always believed that. I try, I try to look my best and, um, because I think he, my husband deserves the best. And so I don't look all ragtag every day. I get up. I get my makeup on. If you don't wear makeup, that's okay. They're free from condemnation. <laughs> but I get up. I get my makeup on and get ready for the day. And, of course, I work. But um, even most, most days, too, even on the weekends, I usually get up and I'm looking good. You know, like I said, there's, there's stuff out there that can get your, get, you know, get your husband's attention. And I, I want his attention to be on me. You know, I, I, I want to look my best. And I want to look my best for him, too. Amen. Amen. Okay. I can't wait to get home because I want to see her again. Amen. All right, so the three things that you need in a marriage, we're going to move into this most important. That was kind of just some important stuff, but what we're about to talk about is the most important. You need to pursue each other, and you need to support your wife or your husband. That's what those 13 things were. Did y'all notice that the women had eight things and the men have five things? Because women are just more needy than men. Oh, that's right. See, there's a woman on the front row admitting it. Hallelujah. Number three is you've got to make God the center of your marriage. 11-11. 11-11. Back up one screen to 11-11. I'm so excited about this. When Joan Hunter came, she taught Pastor Joe, or she said to Pastor Joe, I only came here because of your address, 11-11. 1111 is in Bible numerology. I'm a, I like Bible numerology. I know what a lot of the numbers mean. 555 five, five is the five is the number of grace, but when you see three fives together, and I've been seeing them a lot lately, there's means there's a big change coming. Rodney preached last week, we've stepped into a new season. 555. Five, five. 444 means that angels are involved in your life. And I was seeing 444, 444, 444. And then in February, Pastor Jackie prophesied to me that even the angels of heaven are talking about me every day. And I was seeing it on the clock two or three times a day. I don't know, you only see 444 twice a day. But I would see it somewhere else. I'm like, the angels are, are working on my behalf. They're talking about me. They're getting something ready for me. 11.11, though, is your connection with God. In Bible numerology, 11.11 is your connection with with God. If you want to have uh, M squared, if you want to have a matchless marriage, or if you just want to have a good life, you need 1111. You need a connection with God. Amen? So you single people, you're glad you stayed because the Lord gave me a bunch of things to tell you about your connection with God, whether you're single, whether you're married. This is good for everybody. Amen. 11-11 also means a new season. And Rodney preached about a new season. We've stepped into a whole new season in the entire body of Christ. But how many of you know in your life there are different seasons? There are different seasons. And if you want the next season in your life to be a good one, you need to be connected to God. 11-11, this is what Joan taught uh, Pastor Joe. 11 is like railroad tracks. How many of you know a, a, rail, a railroad track has to be certain, uh, uh, perfectly aligned for a train to go on it? And 11 speaks of alignment. Alignment. Things are coming into a line in our lives because God has some really big things that He wants to do through us in this new season. And 1111 is going to be at the forefront of our thinking every day as we fulfill what God has put in our book for this new season. Because 1111 is your connection with God. So 11 is like railroad tracks. But 1111 is like double railroad tracks. And so you have railroad tracks that are coming in from heaven into your life through your connection with God. 
And then you also have uh, railroad tracks that are going out of your life. God is bringing stuff into your life. He's depositing into your life. And then as you are going about day by day, you're giving out to people. The reason why God is depositing into your life every day is because He's interested in the people that you can reach, the people that you can encourage, the people that you can bring into the kingdom of God. And it's railroad tracks. So we went to this minister's conference and I really had thought about leaving early on Wednesday morning. A fellow youth pastor that I worked with here and took kids to camp with. Kids, I don't know if any of our kids are even here. Andrew's here, so he knows Majel. And uh, she wanted me to stay so she could give me a tour, show me her office. She's now working for Andrew Womack. But a preacher was preaching on Wednesday morning that last time, whenever he began to minister, he just stood up to the pulpit and he said, can I just uh, get you to stand and worship with me for a moment? And he began to sing in moments like this, like these. Singing, I love you, Lord. And when he began to sing, I felt the presence of God so strong that I was trembling in the presence of God. And I wanted to stay for his message. I actually ran into him on Monday night when we got there. I said, Is, are you Jerome? He said, yes, sir. I said, I'm so glad you're here and told him what I just told you. I said, I can't wait for what you have to say this year. And, and this year he preached about the protocol of a preacher. And he said that this year, last year was Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year. And let me remind you that Wednesday is Day of Atonement. It's the end of the High Holy Days. And uh, somebody said, well, that's just under the law. No, it's not under the law. The, the feast of God are His feasts forever, and they're His holy calendar. And He put the Day of Atonement on His holy calendar. It's not even all completely fulfilled yet. And so when you give on the Day of Atonement, I've taught you there's a sevenfold blessing. That's not the law, that's blessing. And so we're going to take a special Day of Atonement offering on Wednesday night. I'm going to give into it, and I'm expecting that sevenfold blessing to come into my life. Amen. I might even, somebody's already asked me, will you talk about God's prophetic calendar? Because He put it forth in the feast. It's His calendar. Amen. So praise the Lord. wanted to remind you of that. When I, where was I going with that? So I went to this service with, his name is Jerome. And he preached about the protocol of a preacher. 5780 is the Jewish year this year. Ours is 2020. Theirs starts in, in September, just before October. Ours starts in January. But they're, they're not quite aligned because the Jewish calendar only has 30, 360 days and ours has 365. So, but this year, either 5780 or 2020 is the year of the mouth. It's a year when God wants you to get out in the highways and byways. He's using His mouth to deposit stuff in you all the time. That's one railroad track coming in. But whenever you're going out, He wants you to open your mouth and begin to tell people about this wonderful Savior. He wants you to begin to tell people about this wonderful healer. He wants you to begin to open up your mouth and tell people about Jesus everywhere you go. This is the year of the mouth. Get your mouth open for the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So he's preaching that about the mouth and at the end he asked all the pastors to stand up. And this woman standing right behind me puts her hand on my back and begins to pray in other tongues. And there was actually a, a message in tongues during this same service. And the, uh, it was a, pro, a message in tongues and prophecy that praying in tongues, you get your mouth open and begin to pray in other tongues. Two weeks ago when I was standing right over there, uh, Feline begins to pray in other tongues. And I don't know if you've ever heard her pray in tongues. You probably have. It sounds like French. I was born 245 miles southwest of the Eiffel Tower and she begins to pray in other tongues. And the Holy Spirit said, that's something I wrote in your book 59 years ago while you were in France. Glory to God. And then she gave me the interpretation of it. What God wrote in my book when I was born there and in France, that, yet, that day was written in my book to talk to people about coming to the court of heaven. 
to get free. To get free. I've been invited to preach two Sundays from today. Is it two or three? I think it's just two now. Yeah, two Sundays from today, I'm going to be preaching on the courts of heaven, the legal system of Jehovah in a church in Lindale, Texas. Hallelujah. And I think one of the things that was said to me is the Lord is going to open many doors for me to teach this to other people in churches. It's so needed to understand about the, the legal system of Jehovah. That's not what we're talking about today. The three foundations, 11-11. So anyway, after the service was over, this lady hands Linda a bracelet. And it's, she said there's a Hebrew name on there. And the Hebrew name means the Lord delights in you. And I want you to know the Lord told me while I was praying for y'all that He delights in you. And He said, He told me to tell you that He has put you together as a powerful team. And he said, what, she said, what I saw in my spirit was like the railroad tracks going through these mountains. Somebody had to, to level the, the road and somebody had to go and lay the tracks. You're the one that lays the tracks. And then other people are going to be able to come in on the tracks that you have laid into the things of God, into the kingdom of God. And I'm standing there saying, now put the next slide up. I'm standing there looking at 1111, thinking about preaching 1111. 1111 is like railroad tracks. And this lady said, I'm the one laying the railroad tracks. I said, what about that? I'm preaching 1111. And you know what 11 is? It's railroad tracks. And she said, oh, glory to God. Now there's three. 1111 in Bible numerology primarily talks about your connection with God. And we need to be connected with God. Well, I get up every morning and the first thought I have is, Lord, I need some time with You. So the foundations of your connection with God are, is the same foundations of every church service. You can, you can call your connection with God quiet time. Now, I like to have mine early in the morning. But some people like to have it late at night. Some people do it other times. I don't know when you do it. Just do it. Do it when it's best for you. But the three foundations of your connection with God, the three foundations of your quiet time, your devotional time, whatever you want to call it, is number one, prayer. Number two, worship. And number three, word. I like to call it mountain time. And we were in mountain time whenever the Lord gave me this. Because how many of you know Colorado's in mountain time? So I want you to read these scriptures about the mountain. I want you to see something. Skip those two middle ones. Go to the page that says mountain. Read all of those scriptures. Okay, Psalm 48, verse 1, it says, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God, in the heaven or the mountain of His holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth. Is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king? And then we want to read Matthew 14, verse 23. Well, let me just point out. The foundation of your connection with God is mountain time. Notice what it says there. In the mountain of His holiness. Now I just finished a four-part series on how you get holy. You get holy because of the legal system of Jehovah. Now you can go to the mountain. I said now you can go to the mountain. Matthew 14, verse 23, it says, When He had sent the multitudes away, He went up... Talking about Jesus. Yeah, He went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, He was there alone. And then we want to go to Mark 6, 46. It says, And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. Okay, and then Luke 6, verse 12. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And then in Luke 9, 28. And it came to pass about eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into or, sorry went up into a mountain to pray. So. Amen. This is talking about Jesus. Jesus had to go to the mountain. And he went there to pray, to worship, 
and receive the Word. If Jesus needed it, you need it. I said if Jesus needed it, if Jesus needed mountain time, you need it. Now I can't go to the mountains every day. It takes five and a half hours to get there. I want you to notice uh, what this, one of the two of the things that it says here. Number one, he was there alone. Number two, he continued all night. Sometimes you need to turn everything else off and all you do is stay in the mountain. That's what this time from Rosh Hashanah till Day of Atonement is actually designed for. It's for you to turn everything else off except for your Bible, except for prayer time, except for worship time. And I doubt that very many Christians even observe that, but you need mountain time. And sometimes you need to set aside 10 days to just spend with God. If Jesus needed it, you need it. But then I notice that he said he took Peter and James and John and went into the mountain. Sometimes he took somebody with him. Now, we don't have mountains around here, but we have a car. And sometimes Linda and I get in our car, and we get in the purpose of getting, we get in our car and drive for the purpose of mountain time. And one day we drove to Childress when we were having mountain time, and one day we drove to Lubbock while we were having mountain time, and we had some powerful prayer time and some interaction about the Word of God to us. So sometimes you go there alone. Sometimes you stay there all night. Sometimes you stay there for 10 days. If you never had a time where you have just cut everything else off except for the Word of God, I challenge you. Now is the time for mountain time. You need it. You need some mountain time. Whereas where you say, I'm not going to be doing anything on my telephone. It's in my pocket. I can't grab it. I'm not going to turn the television on and watch uh, Perry Mason. I'm not going to do anything but open my Bible and spend some time with God. You need it. If you want M squared, if you want a matchless marriage, one of the things that I was taught while we were engaged and we were planning our wedding, the wedding, one of the wedding coordinators at Church on the Move in Tulsa, she said, Tim, let me tell you something. I said, okay. She said, after you get married, you're going to find out Linda's not who, she, who you think she is. And so you're probably going to want to try to fix her. She said, let me just give you some good motherly counsel. She wasn't that old to be my mother, but she was a little older than me. She said, if you ever think you need to fix Linda, go to the mountain." And what I mean by that is go get on your knees and start talking to God. And then she said, can I just be real honest with you? I said, yes. Because I love you and I'm your friend. She said, between you and Linda, you the one that needs the fixing. And so when you get on your knees, He's going to be fixing you. And if you try to fix her, you're going to mess it up. And can I tell you that after 10,760 days, he's fixed a whole lot in me. He sure has. And me too. <laughs> because me I too. learned right away to get on my knees and ask God about it. And nine times out of ten, he says, here's the problem, and it's you. Amen. Glory I appreciate that heart in my husband. So now, do you have your Bible? Turn to Deuteronomy. 11.11. 11.11 is your connection with God. And we're going to start in Deuteronomy 11.11. Okay, it says, But the land whither you go to possess it is a land of hills and valleys, and drinketh water of the rain of heaven. You know, drinking water of the rain of heaven, that's what I want to concentrate on right there. You know, your connection with God will bring water of the rain of heaven into your life. It can't help but. When you put those three things in motion, the prayer, the worship, and the word, you're communing with God, you can't help but receive that rain from heaven. You know, there's different ways that you can receive rain from heaven. You know, you receive rain from heaven sitting here listening to a message. You can, sit, you can uh, receive the rain of heaven by putting on worship music. 
You know, sometimes we just need to be still. We live in a society that is so, so very busy. Busy this. You know, you talk to anybody. Oh, how's your day? What, what's been going on? Oh, I'm busy. How many times do we say that? Busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. But we need to take time sometimes. I think it was Miss Kay that was sharing with Tim. You know, sometimes she just, a lot of times she just put on worship music and just sit. You know, that's drinking. It's quietening yourself. And, and, and we certainly have so many pulls on our time and our energy, but we've got to take that time. You know, there's been words spoken over people's lives in this church very recently in recent months. And I want to encourage you to just press in just a little bit more in your communion with the God. Because that's how those things are going to come to pass when you commune with Him. Amen. It's going to come to pass. If you don't quit, you don't give up, it's going to come to pass. It's a pressing. It takes effort. It's a pressing. And sometimes you feel like, oh, Lord, I'm just going against the wind. I feel like, oh, God, I just need your strength. Well, that's where the communion comes in with the Father, your connection. You know, as you commune with Him, He will strengthen you. He will help you. He said He would. He said He would hold you up with, your, with His victorious hand of righteousness. Did He not mean what He said? He meant what He said. You do, I'll do. You press in, I'll be there. God puts His super on your natural. Amen. You do your part. That rain of heaven will come. I, I have the privilege of working for Christian Radio every day. Well, I, I'm sitting there, you know, and I have the radio on, and I'm kind of phasing in and out during a day's time, you know, because I get busy doing things, and I'm not hearing just every word on the radio. But there are some times, man, the Holy Spirit just gets a hold of me. I mean, has my number. You know, there's just like, seems like in a day's time sometimes, there's just a golden thread that runs through. And it's God, it's the Holy Spirit trying to talk to me. And tell me something. You know, that, that's, a, that's a communion. That's receiving water from heaven. So very important to your spiritual well-being. These aren't just words. You know, that's, God is calling me to drop some things right now. You know, he, it, it's because the time is drawing nigh. You know, I, I, can't, I can't be spending my time in front of the TV. I'm not going to get much from that TV. From You know, I think Ken said it in one of his messages. He was talking about, you know, watching CSI or something like that. And, you know, I, I sense that too, Ken. The Lord's causing us to, to drop off things, things that it's just of the flesh, and he wants us to draw more into him, get a little closer, because we're coming, we're coming into some days that if we're not communing with him or if we're not communicating with him, you know, you're not going to be ready. But if you're communing with him, you're going to be ready. You will be ready. Those three components, prayer, worship, and the word. But those are just some things that, you know, how you can receive rain from heaven, certainly by sitting in the church, in the house of God, and in your private time. So, you're, again, your connection with God will bring water of the reign of heaven into your life. I just want to add one thing to that. There's certain people in the body of Christ that water me. I always like, I always hope I water you when I'm preaching. But I have the TBN app and the God TV app on my telephone, and sometimes I can put something like that on, and it's like water. Now, I encourage you to read your Bible every day, but let's just be honest. Sometimes whenever you wake up early in the morning, you don't feel like reading. There's nothing wrong with you putting on the, getting the TV, TBN app out and listening to somebody that waters you. Edna just gave me a bunch of CDs from Pastor Robert Morris, and, and it's been like water in my soul. Now, you can't substitute reading the Bible all the time for that, but there are times when it's okay for you to just listen to somebody. The Word. The Word is going to bring the water of, of the rain of heaven into your life. Whether you're reading. I, right now, I've just started again in Genesis and in Matthew. 
and I read the New Testament, I mean the Old Testament through, and because at the beginning of the Jewish year, I always try to start all over in my Bible reading. So I'm trying to read through Genesis all the way to Malachi. And then I try to read Matthew to Revelation. And I always read the epistles about five or six times every year. So, but sometimes I need somebody else to water me. And it's okay. That's what I want to say. It's okay if you need somebody else to water you. Who waters you? Then go watch them and let them water you. Amen. Tammy waters me. But I can't make that be a substitute for my time of worship. I can't let that be a substitute for my time of prayer. But I certainly am going to drink out of her life. That's part of the railroad track coming in. Her railroad track is going out. Your railroad track, many of you, your railroad track is going out. It comes right into my life. So we're drinking the water from each other. The Bible even says, and our, our vision statement over there says, we come together so we can partake of one another's strengths. That's the water of heaven that you've been bringing in all week long. Then come here and give it out. Amen. Now, judges, guess what the next uh, address is? 11-11. Judges, 11-11. You know, on that note, too, you know, we, like the Bible says, the Scripture says, we sow to the flesh, we reap of the flesh. If we sow to the Spirit, we reap of life everlasting. Amen. It's living water. Your time with God is never wasted time. Never wasted. Just a little. I was just thinking about that. So into the spirit. You got. We got to be so into the spirit more and more and more. Amen. So in Judges eleven eleven in the Net translation it says, "So Zepheth went with the leaders of Gilead. The people made him their leader and commander. Zephath repeated the terms of the agreement before the Lord in Mizpah. So I, I that the thing I want to. Uh, hone in right there is he repeated the terms of the agreement what's the agreement it's our covenant isn't it so we need to repeat the terms of our our covenant because that's our connection with God you know that's something that I do try to do every day I confess the word of God out of my mouth it's become such a part of me you know like every day I'm covering my family of course in the blood of Jesus but I'm making declarations I'm making proclamations over my family I say any adversities, attacks, accidents, or tragedies that were headed Tim's way, my way, and I go down the line in my family, I say right now I take my authority in the name of Jesus and I say you're devoted right now in my family's life. I declare, declare those things. You know, I'm, I'm backing up. I'm looking at his covet, covenant. I'm looking at his agreement because he said he shall give his angels charge over thee lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. So I believe God for that protection. But you've got to declare it out of your mouth. It's not just going to happen. You know, it is, we said that many times. You know, he gave us that same creative force in our mouth. We've got to speak it out. We've got to proclaim the terms of our agreement in the Bible. Amen. That's so... That's, that's right. It is a decade of declarations. Uh, Brother Rodney was saying that last week. That hit me right between the eyes when he said that. I'm like, yes. You know, there's times and seasons, and, and there's times sometimes to just put a little bit more into that decreeing something over your family. You know, if you've got kids that are living all which ways and not doing what's right, you know, no matter what it looks, looks like, no matter what your eyes can see in the natural, you say, God, according to Ephesians, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory will give unto your kids' names a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him by having the eyes of their names flooded with light so they can know and see the hope to which you have called them. And I start declaring, God, you've called my kids. They don't have any other choice but then to serve you. They don't have any other choice but to serve you. Hallelujah. I committed him. I say this, I, God, I committed him to you when they were babies, and I'm not taking them back. Hallelujah. They belong to you. You're working in them to will and to do your good pleasure. The word is true. You didn't lie. Hallelujah. Your word is working. And I don't care what it looks like, because i got some circumstances right now that don't look very good. 
But you know what? I've got to get my mouth open. I've got to make my mouth do its duty. It's your duty as a godly parent to speak the word of God over your children. If you want to see them born again saved on fire, you've got to speak the word. You think, well, that's real easy for you to say, Miss Linda. No, well, it's not. I, I, like I said, I'm walking through some things right now. Tim and I are walking through some things with our children right now. But I'm not turning her loose. I'm not letting go because they belong to God. They belong to God. I don't care what I feel today. Oh, they're doing this over here. Oh, no, the word is true. The word is true. You're working mildly in them. I'm declaring it. I'm decreeing it. I'm calling it forth. I'm calling them into their destiny in the name of Jesus. And that's, that's, that's proclaiming your covenant. That's proclaiming your covenant. And you need to get a little loud about it, I think. I, mean, I think you need to show the devil you mean it. And I, I just like to get loud because <laughs> I mean it. Amen. Take your authority. Take your stand. Your kids are meant to serve God. If you're in this house, your kids are meant to serve God. They don't belong to the devil's camp. They belong to God's camp. Hallelujah. They were bought with a price. I'm proclaiming it. You proclaim it. Hallelujah. We're just reinforcing that covenant by speaking it out. Okay, in 1 Kings 11, 11 says, Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes which I commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. The point we want to bring out there is failure to connect with God will cause you to lose the blessing. It will keep you from fulfilling your destiny. Well, I want to fulfill my destiny. So I'm going to pursue him. If you just don't quit, I'll say it again. If you just won't quit, you're going to win. You are going to win. I don't care how many times you fall down and, and, and you're thinking, oh, this has got to be the last time, God. And you get back up and brush yourself off and say, I'm proclaiming your word. I am going to have the blessing of God. I am going to fulfill my destiny. I don't care if I fell down the other day and did something. I'm getting back up. I'm brushing myself off. And I'm getting back up and I'm heading. I'm t pressing towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. I wrote this down while I was reading that this morning. You don't sit down. We're going to do this. Now. Nobody plans to fail. If you don't connect with God, it ends in failure. And I'm just going to say it in Jeremiah 11, 11, it says it ends in disaster. A lot of people have disaster after disaster after disaster because they're failing to connect with God. But sitting here today, it's not people that are planning to fail. You're failing to plan. I plan my day. The, the psalmist David said, teach me to number my days. Teach me to order my days. Teach me to plan my days. My best time of the day is between 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock in the morning. And so that's the time that I give to God. I make a pot of coffee first because I need a little coffee to, to wake me up. And since I'm type A blood, it's highly beneficial for me. I read the book. All right? I'm not a doctor, but I read a book about it. It helps me wake up, and then I understand what he's saying to me better. But I put it on my calendar every day. There's nothing else on my calendar between 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock in the morning except connecting with God. That's my 11-11 time. If your time is best at midnight, David Wilkerson said uh, during a time when somebody said you had to do it at 6 o'clock in the morning, he said, hogwash, I spend my time with God at midnight. And I'm a powerful man of God. I don't get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. So you pick the time that's your best time. I don't know what your best time is, but you do. Give it to God and plan to spend that time with God every day through prayer and worship and the Word. Amen. Well, I'm that slow riser in the morning. I have to throw my feet over the side of the bed and just sit there. 
mm-hmm. <laughs> takes me a while to get going in the morning. I'm not known to be a morning person, although I've gotten better through the years. So. Amen. Um, next scripture we'd like to bring up is 2 Kings 11, 11. It says, And the guard stood, every man with his weapons in his hand, round about the king, from the right corner of the temple to the left corner of the temple, along by the altar and the temple. Okay, so the point we want to bring up here is there is supernatural protection in your connection with God. You can expect that. Amen. There's been many times, you know, I told you about the prayer. I pray over my family every day about his protection, the blood of Jesus. Um, Recently, what happened to me is I was um, turning, you know, over there by Ashley Furniture. I was coming up by the side of Ashley Furniture between Ashley Furniture and that toot and totem. And I was at the light going to do a left-hand turn. You know, and I was just waiting there for my turn, and uh, the light turned, the arrow turned green so I could go, and I started uh, started accelerating, and all of a sudden, there's this car that did not, that was coming this way, I was coming this way, and, and, and if I had gone any faster, or accelerated any faster, I would have been T-boned just recently. And you think, you know, I mean, it just jarred me. I called Tim and I said, you know what just happened? Because, I mean, it just, I mean, it jerked the slack out of you. And that's like, Lord, I just thank you for the blood of Jesus. I thank you for the blood of Jesus. I don't take that lightly, his protection. You know, I'm sure all of y'all can testify to something like that. You know, and sometimes it could, it happens more on a daily than we even realize that we're protected by the hand of God, but it comes through our connection with him. We can expect to be protected when we're connected. Amen. Amen. Anything on that? Okay. Next. Amen. That's good. Amen. I'll write that down too. <laughs> okay. Second Chronicles eleven eleven. It says. Are y'all he, noticing all these verses are eleven eleven? Yes. It says, and he fortified. Okay, and he fortified the strongholds and put captains in them and store of vittles and of oil and wine. You know, there's provision in your connection with God. You know, I, I believe that tithe, you know, Malachi 3.10, you don't have to turn there or anything, but, you know, that's taking care of our needs, our provision. You know, when you're connected to God and you're tithing, you can expect to God, you can expect God to meet all of your needs. He's a good father. Amen. If you need provision, I just encourage you and you encourage you if you're not a tither, you know, start tithing. Start giving to God what is already his. Because if you don't, it's just like you have a bag that has holes in it. You know, everything's, I mean, I know somebody right now, one thing right after another has led to another, to another, to another. Why? Because they're not tithing. And they're they're going, what's wrong? It's because you're not tithing. You got to give God something to work with. You got to give Him something to work with. That tithe already belongs to Him. You know, it, if you're not tithing, I, I'm being kind of bold, you're robbing from God. And you're not giving Him anything to work with. It's really important. That's something that Tim and I, through our marriage, I mean, I was tithing before I married Tim. My parents, I lived in a home, Christian Spirit filled home, where my parents taught tithing. And I've done it since I started working, you know, and, and my, I, my needs have been met. Now, am I looking for more? I am. I believe for an abundant harvest, I'm looking for more. But I'm telling you, my needs are met. I've never been without food. I've not been without clothing. It may not be necessarily what I wanted to wear or what I wanted to eat, but God has always provided for me, and he always will, because I'm a tither. You can take that to the bank. You're a tither, he's going to take care of you. Amen. Isaiah, Isaiah 11, 11, and it, and it says, And it, came, it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall send his hand, set his hand, excuse me, again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. 
And through Isaiah 11, 11, we, we see our connection with God. He's going to recover the remnant of his people. You know what? We're so winners. That's what I see. We're so winners. We're to be so winners. There's a remnant out here that needs Jesus Christ. We've got what they need. Amen. I encourage you, and I try to, too. When I'm out and about, you know, instead of thinking about, okay, well, i got to go to the store, and I've got to get done, 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 done. I try to think about others if I see needs. You know, because that's what we do. We're so winners. And sometimes it might not be a full conversation. There's been times where, man, there's been a long line behind me, and I was talking to somebody behind me, and I don't go into a 15-minute message <laughs> with that person behind me because there's, there's people back there, you know, and I don't want to infringe upon their time. But sometimes I, all I can get in is a little word. You know, like the other day when we were in Colorado, uh, the lady that cleaned our room, you know, I, I just was just talking to her, you know, real briefly, and, and I just grabbed her hand, and I just said, you know, I bless you in the name of Jesus. You think, well, that wasn't much. But you know what? Somebody else is going to come along. Somebody else is going to water that seed. Sometimes people don't need a 15-minute message for you to preach to them, especially if there's a long line. You need to be considerate of other people and not you know, feel like you need to stand on the tabletop. I used to feel that way in high school. If I wasn't, if I wasn't standing on the tabletop preaching, I wasn't doing anything for God. Well, I learned, I've learned since then. There's a time. There's a space of time. And so just taking those little spaces of time with people and saying, I just bless you in the name of Jesus. You know, because we exude his love. We have the very presence of God on the inside of us. We bring the presence of God to the table. We bring him to the table. You know, it's like that old saying goes, sometimes you're the only book that, you know, they might not read the Bible, but they're reading you. You may be the only Bible that they're reading. Oh, okay. Moving right along. Okay. So So we're so... I want to do this next one because one of the things I taught you during the legal system of Jehovah is the court is seated and the books are opened. Listen to this in Zechariah 11.11. 11.11 is your connection to God. Another thing that happens in the legal system of Jehovah is covenants. Sometimes you've made covenants with people and those covenants have brought things into your life that need to be cut off. They need to be broken. And so Zechariah 11, 11 says, so it was annulled that very day. In the courtroom of heaven, covenants with people that have brought bad things into your life, they're annulled that very day. There were some covenants that were covenants with death, Isaiah says. Those covenants are annulled this very day. And then the most afflicted of the flock who kept faith with me knew that that was the word of the Lord. So you're through your connection with God, your book is opened. And whenever you really take time to spend with God in prayer and worship, and word, then your book gets opened. Yes, we can open his book, the Holy Bible, anytime and read that book. But there are times whenever your book gets opened and he begins to reveal to you what is written in your book. That happens through your connection with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. During this time, this passed since August the 15th, it's almost two months now. There have been many people who've had their books opened. And there it is right there in Zechariah 11.11. You understand what the Word of the Lord is for your life. You understand what the Word of the Lord is for your life through your connection with God. We're in the New Testament now, which means we're coming in for a landing. Matthew 11.11. I love this one. It says, I tell you the truth, among those born of women, not one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he is. And then verse 12, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and forceful people lay hold of it. I like that in that scripture says, even the least in the kingdom of heaven is great through the connection with God. I mean, you might think you're little in the body of Christ. But you know what? God says you're greater than John the Baptist. If, and he said, 
No one arises greater than John the Baptist. Not Moses, not Abraham, not Isaac. So if you're thinking today, well, I'm just not very significant in the church. I'm here to tell you, yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are a vital part uh, that makes up the body of Christ, and your part is important. And you have something to say, and you have something to give. Amen? He didn't lie. He told the truth. Amen. Your connection through him. Uh, John eleven eleven. and it says, after he said this, he added, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to awaken him. So awakening in that scripture, John eleven eleven, we're talking about the track, the connection to God. Awakening comes through your connection with God. I felt real impressed when we were going over the notes. There's somebody here that you need this right here. You know, what you thought was dead. I just wrote it down. What you thought was dead and that would never arise and awaken again, by your connection with God, it will live again. Now, I don't know who that is, but I, I wrote that down. What you thought was dead, that it never could be resurrected, but because of your connection with God, it will be. Amen. He perfects all that concerns you. Okay, praise God. I believe that. So I, right now, I'm getting instruction from the throne. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to sing a song right now, and I want to encourage you. Think about that last thing I just said. What, there's something there. There's something there with somebody, or maybe some bodies, that you thought was dead. God's going to awaken that, resurrect that, because of your connection with him. Amen. He's going to do it. So I just invite you to come down to the front. If there's something that you want prayer about, you what want Tim we're and I to specifically pray about? going to pray for today is there are people sitting here and you think, I want that. I want my connection with God strengthened. And I'm here to tell you, He's here to strengthen that. And Linda and I are going to pray and lay hands on you. Paul, I want you to get ready while at the, toward the end of this song, get ready to take over with the music. But if that's something, if you're sitting there today and this message has touched your heart, and you said, yes, I want to be, have, I need God to strengthen my connection. I want you to come and line up here. We're going to pray for you. And, but even this song is going to strengthen you. Because some of you feel like you're just going through the fire. But God, through your connection with God, you're going to go through the fire. Again. Go ahead, Mike. So many times I've questioned certain circumstances or things I could not understand. Many times in trials, weakness blurs my vision and my frustration gets so out of hand. It's then I am reminded I've never had to stand the test alone As I look at all the victories The Spirit rises up in me It's through the fire my weakness is made strong Thank you, Lord He never promised that the cross would not get heavy or the hill would be hard to climb. He never offered 
our victories without fighting but he said help would always come in time just remember when you're standing in the valley of decision and the adversary says give in just hold on our lord will show up and he will take you through the fire again uh, i know within myself that i would surely perish but if i trust in the hand of god he'll shield the flames again again he never promised that the cross would not get heavy or the hill would not be hard to climb he never offered our victories without fighting but he said help would always come in time just remember when you're standing in the valley of decision and the adversary says give in just hold on our lord will show up and he will take you through the fire again just hold on our Lord will show up and he will take you through the fire again. Praise God. Well, we just want to give you that opportunity. If you're going through a struggle right now or you're going through some fire, all we want to do is just encourage you and kindle Yes, amen. To just help you and strengthen you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe he's going to strengthen you and help you. Like he said in Isaiah 41, 10, that he would strengthen you. He would help you. He would hold you up with his victorious hand of righteousness. Amen. He promised. He delivers. Amen. Amen. He's a good father. Hallelujah. Just pray in your in the Holy Ghost right now. We stir ourselves up, God. Everything, every heavy thing. Hallelujah. Rosomani machine da mando lo bosheta la ha. Rosamani machine da baso talaha. Strength comes from the Lord. Strength comes from the Lord. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by His Spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, the infusion, the infusion of the power of God. The infusion, hallelujah. Infused with power from on high. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, infused with power from on high. It's the name, it's the name, it's the name of Jesus. It's the name, it's Him doing it, it's Him doing it. Hallelujah. Oh, if you, Lord, if you, oh, hallelujah, rising above, rising above, hallelujah, rising above in Jesus' name, hallelujah, rising above the circumstances in Jesus' name, oh, hallelujah, infusion from on high, infusion from on high, infusion, infusion, oh, Rabakasima, no, only you, God. Only you, God. Only you, God. Only you, God. Infusion. Infusion of the Holy Ghost and power. 
Hallelujah. Strength for the day. Strength for the day in Jesus' name. Strength for the day in Jesus' name. Oh, Rabasina Mashiketalaha. Undala Mashitaha. Oh, ha 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 ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. See, no, no, Mashitaha. What the devil meant for harm, God is turning it around for your good and your benefit because you're called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. You're called according to his purpose. Rosamana Masota, the strength of God, the strength of God on the inside of Andrew. Hallelujah, the strength of God. Oh, Rabasina Sheketanaha. Oh, Rabasanda, infusion, infusion. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Andrew, you got it. 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 Oh, Rabasina Mashikebatada Hasebotanaha. Eh, Nana Sheha. Esemana Mashita. Oh, hallelujah. Bigger, 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 think bigger. Hallelujah. Think bigger. Think bigger. Oh, Tana Mashika Tana Basota Naha Fusion. Woo! Woo! Shada Mandala Masota Infusion. Strength of God. Strength of God. Burden removing, yoke destroying. Hallelujah. Oh, it's you, God. It's you, God. It's you, God. It's you. It's you. It's you. It's you. It's always been you. Hallelujah. Strength, 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 strength. Every disease, every germ, every virus even has to die in Jesus' name. I don't know what that is, Jeanette, but every disease, every germ, every virus that touches your body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives. It camps on the inside of you. Hallelujah. It's subject to the blood. It's subject to the blood. His blood was enough. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Oh, infusion. Infusion. Oh, from God the Father. Hallelujah. Strength. Strength, strength in Jesus' name. Oh, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon formed against Sharon shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Every tongue that rises up against her in judgment, you shall condemn. Resurrection, 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 resurrection. Resurrection. Oh, today, today, today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Oh, fusion. Oh, thank you, Father, from strength, for strength on high. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabba Sanda Rabba Sota, that you're doing the work. You started the work in him and you will continue. Hallelujah. Go Sabatara Rabba Sonda Laha. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. What a worshiper you are. What a worshiper you are. What a worshiper you are. Oh, he says, I see, I know, I see, I know. Hallelujah. You're connected. You're connected. You're connected. Mountains are moving. Mountains are moving. Mountains are moving. You know from which your help comes from. It comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. You know where your help comes from. It comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabbi Sanda, you're working, you're working, you're working, you're working, you're working, you're moving things around. You're moving things around. Oh, Rabbi Sanda, Rabbi Sanda, Rabbi Sheta, Rabbi Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes, he is, Shirley. He's doing it. He's doing it. He's doing it. He's doing it. God's working. God's working. He's working. He's working. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabasini da Sheketaha. Effusion. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Effusion. From on high, the strength of God. The strength of God. Hallelujah. You've got the keys. You've got the keys. Ha, ah, you know. You know you've got the keys. Dele ma shiki patata la ma sote la sheke hata yaha. Oh, Rabasata, the fusion of Almighty God. 
Rosonda na bashiki tara masoko tata ha. Rosongo nda na masongo nda na masota. Yes, I've taught you to war. I've taught you to war. Hallelujah. You're connected too. Ha. Nda na bashiki tara na masoko tara bashita ha. You're walking in it. You're walking in it. You're walking in it. Oh, sebre de shin da na masota infusion. Infusion. It's you, God. It's you. It's you. It's you. It's you, God. Yes, yes, yes. You're at work. You're at work to will and to do your good pleasure. It's true. It's true. He's working. He's working. He's working. Hallelujah. He's working. In Jesus' name, you bring the presence. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank you for infusion. Oh, Holy Ghost, infusion. Power, power, power from on high. Oh, you cast those cares over on him because he cares for you. Hallelujah. You're not meant to be a donkey. God did not mean for you to be a beast of burden. You are not meant to be a donkey. You cast those cares over on the Lord. You lay it on the altar and you do leave it there. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you for strength. Infusion from the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah. Oh, Ndeleve Sheta. Strength. Strength. Infusion of strength. Hallelujah. To walk it out. To walk it out. To walk it out. Strength to walk it out. I speak it to you in the name of Jesus. I speak it. To you in the name of Jesus. Declare it. Start declaring it, brother. Start declaring it. Start declaring it. Decreeing it. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I said in Jesus' name. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, God, I just thank you. Oh, infusion. Infusion strength from on high. Om de le beshina gandele isum brandeshe rendengo sahatele mosheta laha. He knows it all. He knows it all. He knows it all because he's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. Rosopatata tamasota. Hallelujah. You hear his voice. You know his voice. And the voice of a stranger you will not follow. You hear his voice. You know his voice. And the voice of a stranger you will absolutely not follow. In Jesus' name. Your steps are ordered of him. Hallelujah. Your connection is with him. Your connection is with him. Hallelujah. I release that right now. Release that right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Freedom, freedom, freedom. Freedom in the Holy Ghost. Freedom in the Holy Ghost. Jesus' name. Freedom, 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 freedom. Freedom. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Tadamashe Tadaha. Oh, Tadamashe Tadaha. Hallelujah. On the Lebe Sheke Tedamasu Tete Tishiha. Ela Masu de Shigi de la Mongo so Rede Sheteha. Oh, Reseke. A walking, a walking, a walking, a walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. Keep talking. Keep saying, Hallelujah. He's not going to disappoint you. Hallelujah. It will surely happen. It will surely come. It will surely happen. It will surely come. Hallelujah. I release. I release the strength of God on the inside of Becky. I release the strength of God on the inside of Becky. The same power, the same, the same, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives on the inside of you 
and it quickens your mortal body. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Becky, you are very precious to the Father. You are very precious to the Father. I'm praying that He reveal that so, so strong to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That He also, He delights in you. He delights in you. Hallelujah. Strength, strength, strength in Jesus' name. Infusion from you, God. It's you. It's you. It's you, God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, I lift up my sweet sister, Shirley. <laughs> oh, strength for the day. Amen. Strength for the day. Hallelujah. His joy is your strength. In your weakness, He makes you strong. In your weakness, He makes you strong. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabasina Mashe, Te 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 Le Masai. Ela Sina Namashe. Ela Masota Tada Masota. Infusion from you, God. Infusion from you. Hallelujah. Supernatural strength. Supernatural strength. All those cares, hallelujah, washed away. Hallelujah, because of Shirley's connection with you. With you, God. Hallelujah. 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 The same thing. You know, he didn't make you a beast of burden. Hallelujah. We're to cast it, whatever that is, just cast it, cast it, cast it over on the Lord. Because he so cares for you. Hallelujah. You're not a burden. Of, you're not a beast of burden. Hallelujah. Oh, I release it. I release it. I release that right now. In Jesus' name.